could a shared network of ground source heat pumps be the solution to decarbonise millions of UK homes without residents having to foot the bill? Well, I'm in Cornwall to find out, and this is the Everything Electric Show. If you want to see Everything Electric in real life, then join us at one of our fully charged live shows around the world. Next up, we're coming to Canada, so get your tickets today. Heating is an essential part of our everyday lives and actually accounts for a third of the UK's carbon emissions. But fortunately, we have started to make some pretty substantial progress. And in fact, household emissions are two thirds of what they were compared to 1990 levels. But if we want to reach net zero by 2050, we still have some serious work to do. So with 27 years left, and the requirements to decarbonise approximately 20,000 households per week, is there a simple solution sitting right beneath our feet? There is a load of heat that sits underground, but in order to access it and to use it for home heating, we have to drill some pretty deep holes. Now here in Cornwall, there is a 300 million year old granite spine that sits underneath the peninsula. And it has some pretty interesting properties, which means that you don't have to dig quite as deep holes because it retains its heat and brings that heat slightly close to the surface. And it's that principle which Kenza Utilities are trying to leverage as part of their Kenza Heat the Streets programme. Now this is apparently a national first and in partnership with the EU European Regional Development Fund, they're developing a network of heat pumps um, that can heat, provide 100% of the heating and hot water needs for the community that sits here. Now if successful, this should reduce the carbon output from home heating by 70% and critically, the residents haven't had to pay anything towards the installation and infrastructure of this project. Project. So we're standing on top of Kenzie Utilities' first ground array infrastructure installed in the highway and this is low carbon heat network that's serving the, the homes behind us now. Each of these houses has its own small heat pump inside and they pay us a month, monthly standing charge for the infrastructure. So broadly, what is a ground source heat pump and how does this system work? Well, typically, a ground source heat pump is connected to a single ground array, a few metres below ground level. It works by absorbing energy from the ground before it compresses the energy into high-grade heat. This heat is then delivered through your radiators or underfloor heating, or both, and is used to heat your water at home. Similar to an air source heat pump, this relies on refrigerant technology running backwards. Crucially, it's 30 to 40% more efficient than the air source version because it doesn't have to cope with really low temperatures in winter. And it's typically five times more efficient than a gas boiler. And for our full episode on the physics of a heat pump, do check out the link in the box below. So in this project, instead of each individual home having its individual borehole, there is in fact a network of 42 boreholes. And I'm stood on top of one and it goes 106 metres beneath my feet. And that means that there's a loop, there's an array which sends coolant along this loop so it's absorbing heat from the granite that sits below the ground. And it comes back up to the surface where it's turned from low grade heat into high grade heat in each of the home's individual heat pumps. Now the really interesting thing here is diversification. And that's the principle that the more heat pumps that you have on the same system, the statistical likelihood of a heat pump operating at its absolute peak load substantially reduces. And that means that the overall design load for the whole system can be a little bit less. And what that really means for Kenza is that they don't have to dig quite as deep underground. And obviously that means saving a little bit of money along the way. So the infrastructure that we're installing has a, an expected lifespan of about 100 years and that makes it ideal for long-term investors. So for our new build customers, we can install this low carbon infrastructure and repay that monthly cost over a 40 year term, which is ideal for, for pension companies. We chose Stythians because it was off gas, uh, but since we started this project with the energy crisis, the, the price of natural gas to heat homes has, has actually gone up and the price of heating oil has come down. So it's th this kind of solution is now equally good on, on and off gas areas. Kenza are the UK's largest manufacturer of ground source heat pumps and behind me this is where they make them and actually they make 54 a week. You might 
might think that there's some pretty fancy technology if you're sending something 106 metres underground in order to access those hot temperatures. So we've come to Kenza's facility just four miles up the road to see what is going on. And this is it. And it's essentially a fancy hose pipe. One goes down, one goes up, they're fused in the bottom of a V. And honestly, it's as simple as that. When we came here originally, people didn't really know very much about heat pumps, and that's, that's not unusual at all. So we had to do a lot of education to make people familiar with the kind of technology we were proposing we would install. The, the bigger barrier was actually the, the contracts that we were using on this project. People were a bit nervous about that, so we had to do a lot to reassure people that they were going to be well protected in the agreements that we put in place. So what does this all mean for residents? Well, connecting to a heat network really is no different from connecting to the UK gas network. Residents here pay a standing charge of roughly about a pound a day, which is comparable to what you'd expect for gas as well. Now, as part of this project, residents also got smart thermostats, new radiators, hot water cylinders, pipework, and of course, the magic that is the heat pump. And each property, they did a heat loss survey to see what system was most appropriate for that kind of household. This property is a little bit bigger, so it came with a seven kilowatt system, which is housed in there, which is amazingly a former coal store. And how incredible is that? It was once a coal store and is now housing renewable energy technologies. So we're going to speak to Mel, who is living with this technology. So when I first heard about the project coming to Stidians, I was really positive about it. Um, I attended um, the meeting that happened in our uh, local community space. Um, it was great to hear from the staff members and the team members on the project. We had an oil system before um, having the heat pump installed. Of course the electricity is going to go up, it's got to run the, um, the heat pump, um, but that's, that's the offset. Um, but we, we don't see that as a massive issue because you're just changing one bill for another bill. It's just swapping it from me buying oil and putting it in the tank and moving that money and it's on my electricity bill. We estimate it to come in about the same as our, our oil heating was before, so yeah, it should be about the same, but obviously super green. I would say the outside work um, that goes on around your street, it's a small inconvenience for a big long-term gain and internally just pack away as much stuff as you can because they're going to lift floorboards, they're going to move things but the, the, the clearer the space the easier it is for them and the quicker they'll be in and out through your house. Since we started Heat the Streets, we've managed to make the, the new build funded array off our commercially viable, which is fantastic. So that, that's off now being sold on the open market. The social housing and private housing retrofit product has a, a bigger funding gap. So we've still got a bit of work to do there to make it more accessible to homeowners. The one thing I would like to see that would make this much easier to, to deploy would be for plumbers to install the right size radiators and pipe parks now to work with condensing gas boilers because there would be a lot less retrofit work required inside homes if that were the case. As with any infrastructure project, of course there is going to be a little bit of disruption whilst it's being built, but that is totally worth it when it means that you get these lovely low carbon technologies at the end of it. And what we've seen today is so cool. It's shown how feasible this project is and how possible it is to ensure that people don't have to pay that upfront cost of renewable technology, something we know is a huge barrier to their wide-scale deployment. So making low-carbon technologies more accessible to more people, what's not to like?